In this video, you're gonna learn how to remove hum from your audio recordings. Hum can occur from something that's physically in your room when you're recording, like an air conditioner, or it can be a, a physical fault with some of the recording equipment, like a dodgy microphone or lead. It's basically uh, a low level, low frequency drone, um, consistent sound through your audio recording. And we'll take a look at an example in just a second. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to do this, regardless of which DAW you have. Um, so first we're gonna take a look at how you can just use the stock plugins within your DAW to remove or reduce hum. Then we're gonna look at the easy option, which is using Isotope RX D-Hum. And then if you don't have access to any paid software, we're also gonna have a look at removing it in Audacity for free as well. So first, let's take a listen to the audio we've got here. Again, going back to the engineering contract days, you'd pull up a list of hiring managers that you know are in. So you can hear that kind of low level buzz that sounds like there's been some problem with, with uh, something they used to record with. So first, we're just gonna look at the stock plugins that will come with any door. I'm gonna open up the channel strip in Pro Tools and I'm gonna be using Gate and EQ. So first, let's have a think about what we'd need to EQ out, which frequencies to reduce this. It's very low level. Um, so I'd be putting on a high pass filter on a podcast vocal like this anyway. So we're gonna start with using a high pass filter, cut out everything below, let's say 90 Hertz and try that. Compare. Yeah, so that really low sub bass is gone. It's not quite as intrusive now already. Still got that buzz. Let's have a have a look at the, the buzz towards the top end. Yeah, because we don't want to... We don't want to be removing too much that it will reduce the quality of the of the vocals sound them too dull, make them sound too dull, but. Again, going back to the engineering contract days, you'd pull up a list of hiring managers that you know are in your patch and you'd work through them. Okay, so the vocals still sound clear and we've reduced some of that hum, but if we'd use a gate, that should make more of a difference. A gate is where we're reducing the level of the, the signal when it goes below a certain threshold. So how low do we need to reduce the threshold to just pick up the, the hum and not the, the dialogue? It's very loud on this recording. Bring the ratio up. Let's not reduce it too much because I feel like it will start affecting the vocals. Let's call it 12 dB to start with and smooth out the knee so it's not quite, the gain reduction is quite so sudden when it goes below. Now let's have a listen. Do 20 calls in a day, not comfortably, but you'd get there in the US. So it's reducing it by a fair amount. Let's play around with the depth, reducing it a little bit more and see how much we can get away with. Again, going back to the engineering contract days, you'd pull up a list of hiring managers that you know are in your patch and you'd work through them do 20 calls in a day, not comfortably, but you'd get there in the US. Okay, so we've significantly reduced the level of hum. You can hear that it's affecting the vocals a little bit, especially when he's talking more quietly. But in a recording like this, if this is all you have access to, the ideal scenario would just be to re-record it. But if you can't re-record it, then this is a fair workaround. And I, I, it's not ideal, but it's still listenable. Um, we can still salvage it to an extent. Also, when you're editing, you can, if you have the time, you can simply cut out areas of hum. Then obviously you're still gonna have it over the vocals, but you'd work through them, do 20 calls in a day. It might sound a bit jarring, depending on if you've got another track with another speaker. We're gonna take a look at the easy option, as I call it now, Isotope RX D-Hum. This is a paid um, package of plugins. So uh, if, if you're serious about audio production, then it's really useful. 
So what RX Dehum does, it reduces significantly a few notch filters, um, the very low frequencies and some of the low mids as well. You can change how many frequencies it affects to, to increase or decrease the strength of the hum removal. Um, you can suggest what the hum sounds like using the suggest function, just like with the denoise. But to be honest, it does a pretty good job of doing it itself if you just use adaptive mode and click render. You can see that it's obviously reduced it by a huge amount. Let's have a listen. Again, going back to the engineering contract days, you'd pull up a list of hiring managers that you know are in your patch and you'd work through them. So after you've done that, you could always go back and make a few more adjustments and then go and EQ it as well. I wouldn't recommend using compression before you've done the dehum removal because otherwise you're gonna be reducing the, the louder sounds, so which is gonna be the dialogue. Um, and it's just going to make the hum even more prominent. So do your de-hum, de-humming first and then compress if the vocals need it. Right, so next up we're going to try and reduce the hum in Audacity. Um, hum is typically more of a continuous tone than the random frequencies of noise, but you can still use the noise reduction tool and it, and it often helps reduce it as well. So if you highlight a section of the hum on its own, and then go to effect, noise reduction, get noise profile so it knows what the noise or the hum sounds like, highlight everything, go back into noise reduction, and yeah, let's bring that down a little bit. I think the sensitivity needs to be quite high on this so it can pick up that it's noise. Click, click OK. Yeah, and it's clearly reduced it by a significant amount there. Again, going back to the engineering contract days, you'd pull up a list of hiring managers that you know are in your patch and you'd... So it's clearly reduced it by a significant amount. Um, I think it's also affected the the quality of the dialogue quite a bit as well. So I'm gonna see if we can go a little bit lighter on that. Maybe go to 12 dB. Again, going back to the engineering contract days, you'd pull up a list of higher managers. Yeah, that... so the dialogue sounds a bit less warbly now, but we've got more of the noise. It's, it's up to you um, wh where you want to define that balance. You could also use that, uh, the noise reduction, then go for the, um, the noise gate as well. So the same as we used in Pro Tools first. So where you're setting the threshold, so anything below, say, 12 dB, is going to be reduced by 12 dB. Again, going back to the engineering contract days, you'd pull up a list of hiring managers that you know are in your patch and you'd... Yeah, I think that works as a nice compromise and then you could EQ it as well as you would normally and, and compress and everything. So whatever software you have access to, you should be able to reduce the hum, if not remove it completely. Uh, I'm gonna be dropping more of these audio fixing tips um, in, the, in the coming weeks. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss those. And let me know in the comments section below what method are you going to be using to remove hum from your audio recordings. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.